Okay, so for the purpose of this video, I uh, went ahead and preloaded this hook with all the deer hair and I put the wings on this bomber. Um, I'm the kind of tire that likes to attach my hackle uh, before I start trimming and it's just a preference. So we'll get right into it. Uh, so I was taught this little method here a few years ago now by Don Vincent and basically you trim just a little bit off in the back and you're using that as a guideline when you're doing your main body trimming so your scissors are going to be pointed down at that but you want your tips basically hitting there as you're cutting if you're doing it in this shape so your first cut is usually the one you've got to be most careful with and then after that basically you're just looking at the horizon and if you have a rotary vise like I do then you just spin look at your horizon and trim and just keep doing that as you're rotating I'm using uh, TMCO curved scissors for this But I've also used the copter scissors recently, which I liked. Using a Daiichi 2117 number 4. And the deer hair is actually Roebuck hair. Roebuck has been really, really nice for trimming bombers. Um, spinning bombers, really. It's, uh, there's zero under fur and it just spins like a dream so as you can see now that i've got the bulk of the body off just kind of fine tuning until i get the general shape of the bomber that i want so when the main body is right about where i want it i'll come in and just clean up the tail a bit I usually like to do my bomber bodies like this in like a long cone shape. Some people prefer the cigar shape. I guess it's all just a matter of preference. All right, so now I come in and I put my scissors right in here and I turn them in a bit and then again, you're rotating. makes such a mess my house is literally covered in deer fur all right so once you do that you want to come up and just kind of round that off so you don't have a sharp edge up front and that will really kind of knock it home with the cone shape you're going for if that is in fact what you're doing i like it i find that they swim really nice on top of the water they cast nice I'm going to leave it a little bit straggly just so we can uh, really demonstrate how this method works. Alright, so I learned this method um, probably about four years ago and it's really when I took fly tying a lot more seriously. Um, and this method really helped me to get my bombers a lot cleaner at first and back then I was pretty much using this method on every single bomber I tied but the problem with that is is that the burning method only really is appropriate when you're using a natural fur uh, when you're using dyed fur it dyed fur and you burn it and then scrape it it tends to change the color a lot and um, it, it's not subtle either it's pretty drastic so 
Um, I recommend that if you're going to use this method, just try to keep to using it on natural bodies where it doesn't really make too much of a difference. So before we do it, one thing to keep in mind is that this is a very quick process. You want this flame to hit it and gone almost right away in a certain area because if you leave it on, this thing's going to really just go up and you pretty much ruin your body and trust me, I've ruined a lot. So I light it and then just like that. So your hose is going to stink. It smells like burnt hair in here. This is a doll razor blade I used to uh, use in my Benda blade. I kept it. I've actually been using the same razor blade now for about all four years. I find this is the best way to do it. Some people have used sandpaper to take them down, but basically you take your doll razor and you bend it and just bring it up the body and you can see the ash coming off. You can even give it a little gentle blow as you're doing it and it'll keep it out of your face. And there you have it. I mean, you can go back, sometimes a little bit of fur comes out, just pick it out. Um, there's no reason why we can't just finish this bomber off uh, while well, the camera is rolling. I'm still getting used to this uh, new jaws. I'm using the big game jaws and oh, there it is. One thing I can tell you is if you're missing the groove on these jaws, <laughs> The jaws, when that hook finds its groove, it's going to let you know, and everybody else in the room. Alright, so, again, this is not the, the way everybody does it. This is how I do it. Um, I don't claim to be a professional by any means, um, but if I could pass on a few tips that I learned right off the bat and save some people some time, I, I think I've done what I wanted to do. Um, most traditional bomber guys will say you get five turns of, turns of your hackle um, to the top, and that's all fine and dandy. You know, it, it's it's like art. It's subjective. It's what you prefer. Uh, I don't prefer that. I prefer to put them in around this far apart. I just I've always liked the look of it. Really, I should be rotating my vise right now because it works a lot easier that way. I just really love a lot of hackle and usually guys that get bombers off me or girls that get bombers off me order them off me because this is how I tie them so but you can see how clean the body is and I really really that burning method helps a lot also a good pair of scissors is huge I mean, it like anything in fly tying, your gear is really, I would say, at least 60% of it. And we just saw, I usually pull this back and I create a little bit of a ramp from the uh, eye of the hook back to the base of this calf tail tied in, just to kind of make it pop up a little bit. This head's a little bit bigger than I would like it to be normally, but yeah. I use a um, an S whip finisher and I don't, before anybody starts cutting in and commenting saying you're using that wrong, yada yada yada, I, I know I'm using it wrong, it works. This is how I was taught by my grandfather probably 15 years ago and it's been almost impossible for me to change, so. There you have it. This is uh, an orange bomber and it was done with the, uh, the Singe and Scrape method. So I hope you really en enjoyed that and maybe learned a, a tip from it and um, thank you very much.